Hello and welcome to Hillcrest's short video on the calibration of a circular chart recorder. Today we're not trying to demonstrate precise calibration, we're just rigging up a little setup here so we can show the essential fundamentals of calibration. Here we have a recorder which we have deliberately delinearized uh, and adjusted the calibration and we're going to correct the calibration uh, and show you how you can calibrate uh, our recorders and other manufacturers recorders all operate more or less on the same principles. Here we have the rotation of the element known as a borden which is causing a movement here which in turn is transmitted to a motion on the pen. You notice the fundamentals are what we call the parallelogram rule and the parallelogram rule is applicable to this lower mechanism in this case where the distance from the pen arm to the center line should be transposed left to right. That should be applicable in the center of the chart. Before you commence calibration the first thing to check is that you have a, a mechanism with no backlash and that will repeat. So by simply applying some pressure Today we're using a simple hand pump and a test gauge. We're only using a small section of the test gauge. This instrument is ranged 0 to 5,000, so we're only using a quarter. Not normally advisable. You would normally expect to use at least 75% of the range of a test gauge, but for test purposes today, that will suffice. So first thing is, the chart recorder must repeat. And you can see it's at the moment it's measuring 900 psi. This is 0 to 5,000. Each one of these divisions is 50 psi. We claim the normal calibration accuracy of our chart recorders is plus or minus 1%. 1% is one division on a 5,000 uh, range chart, which equates to 50 psi. Now, for it to be 50 psi, that only allows a maximum deviation of half a division above and half a division below if you were going to combine the two or one division as a total division somewhere in the chart. Hopefully and normally we would get all our chart records far better than that. You will find that some manufacturers claim quarter of a percent accuracy. A quarter of a percent accuracy is effectively half a division divided into to give you quarter of a division which actually on a chart which is nearly 10 inches is impossible to see because the thickness of the line uh, is greater than quarter of a division anyway that's uh, another story so first uh, thing to adjust to zero is zero on the pressure gauge adjustment is via the locking ring here Slacken the locking ring, move the pen up, move the pen down, and lock the ring. Then you can raise the pressure. As I said in the start of the video, this has been delinearized, so we go to halfway up the chart. It's not possible to... There were 2,500 on the uh, test gauge, and we're actually reading 2,600. This has been de deliberately delinearized. Delinearization is from these two adjusting screws here, they've been left slack for speed of uh, the video. And if you look at the parallelogram, the parallelogram doesn't apply because the pen is, is tilted up deliberately and that's given us uh, more movement in the first half of the chart by raising the pen than the second half of the chart. And, uh, vice versa if the pen was the opposite way around we'd have more movement in the second half of the chart than the first half of the chart so quickly going up 2500 was 2600 and go to 5000 we're a little bit short on span span adjustment is in it comes in two forms the, the fine adjustment is a movement from the borden in and out the closer to the centre of the borden, the less movement. The exact opposite applies to the, the pivot point 
and the adjustments that are available in the centre of the of the mechanism here. So although you can't see on the uh, on the picture that we have a series of holes which we call the coarse span. So if it's not possible to get the span that you require uh, on the fine span then by moving the pivot point closer to the center pivot increases the movement. Moving it away decreases the movement. So we're now going to quickly show with the at 2500 we were reading uh, 2600. As I already uh, know exactly where this instrument falls in to be calibrated, I'm going to drop the, the pen arm, drop the pressure off, re-zero it, You can now see the parallelogram in the centre of the chart. You can see that the two, the two arms are parallel, the two lengths are the same, centre line to centre line. This is the parallelogram reel. But now we're going to need to, I'd already uh, downspan the instrument because that has an adverse effect. So by increasing the span now, back to approximately where, we, where I know we should be. I know that because we've got some calibration paint on. We'll go back to zero again. Re-zero the recorder. And here we go for a quick test. So we're going to go 1000. Thousand on the test gauge, two thousand five hundred, miles and a half a division low, four thousand, one division low, and then five thousand just over a division low. And now, now I need to increase the span slightly. So again we're adjusting that pivot point out. We check the zero slightly, lock the zero off, and the same again. Can we go on to the test gauge? We'll go 1000, 1000, 2,500, 2,500, 4,000, 4,000, slightly under 4,000, 5,000, 5,000, or very, very slightly under. One tiny more adjustment will bring us exactly up to 5,000. Again, slightly under span. Finally, as a check, you obviously should do a downscale test. 5,000, 4,000, 2,500, 1,000, zero. And the readings uh, should be within 1% of the upscale readings. Otherwise, the hysteresis, as it's called, is unacceptable. It's not possible to calibrate a pressure recorder by doing three pressure movements because it's possible to have a delinearization problem in the other sectors. The minimum number of points that you need for calibration is four. We recommend five. Thank you for watching.